Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Well, today's a new day. I've been having a lot of distractions getting over to the uh, car location where I do the work at. And I pulled up to my other car to get my oil drain pan because I'm going to drain some oil, do oil changes and stuff like that today. And when I got back in the car, shifted it into drive, the car didn't want to move. I looked down, I had a yellow up arrow and a check engine light and the car was in third gear instead of first and didn't want to move. I scanned the codes with my uh, code reader and it gave me two transmission error codes. One was a P0705, the other one is a P1618. At any rate, those are not codes that you want to ignore being a transmission possible issue. I inadvertently reset the codes kind of in a mild panic since I had the numbers wrote down. Turns out those are not Volvo specific codes and will not tell the exact issue in Volvo language. So I'm going to put a halt on swapping over this angle gearbox until I figure out what's going on and if this car possibly has a transmission issue. So what I'm probably going to do is drive the car for maybe a thousand miles and see if that code returns. Hopefully, if it's going to return, it will return quickly and I could take it to a Volvo mechanic specialist shop that can read the proper computer codes and let me know if that's something that's serious or if it's something that's minor. If it's something minor, like a speed sensor, I'll replace it and deliver the car. If it's something serious, I'll probably have to replace the transmission before delivering the car. And, and that's a whole nother ball of issues there. So today I'm going to do some other things other than replace this uh, gearbox. Because if this car truly has a serious transmission problem, I'm going to have to work on that uh, separately. So let me get to work on some minor things and I'm putting on hold uh, delivering this car. My plan was to finish that gearbox, finish the other items that I could today, and then head towards Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to deliver the car to my mom. But since the cars throwing that transmission code um not going anywhere for at least 500 miles to see if that code returns well after some web searches it seems like this is likely a problem with a switch that controls the gear selector on top of the transmission called a pmp switch i actually have a video showing people how to rebuild those things so i'm going to press forward so let me go ahead and get this wheel off of here and work on getting that gearbox swapped out. First thing I'm going to do is get my hand at spraying the inside of this light assembly, trying to get it to reflect light. Uh, this reflector in here, as you can see, I entrusted somebody to try to paint it yesterday. They did me wrong. So I went and got this Rust-Oleum that's supposed to be shiny. I was looking for something that said reflective didn't quite find that and I was looking for something that had high temp. This is only good for 200 degrees. So this is probably not the correct solution. I'm going to try it anyway. But what you want is something that is reflective and something that is high temp chrome paint if you're going to try this. I'm going to be replacing the angle gearbox on this Volvo V70. It's a 99 model. The gearbox was destroyed when the previous owner had a flat, uh, was talked into replacing two tires instead of four. The uh, four tires made the wear pattern of the tires 
different enough to destroy the gearbox. So, the essential thing in keeping these gearboxes in good condition is A, service them every once in a while. B, is to uh, keep your tire wear within, I think, 730 seconds or something like that but I'm not sure if it's in the owner's manual I'm sure it's in maintenance manuals I'll try to get that information and post it in the comments below so what you need to do is secure the vehicle park and brake uh, remove the wheel uh, secure it on jack stands or however you're going to do it on the lift or whatever remove the control arm remove the axle out of the gearbox you pull the gearbox out uh, it's preferred that you replace the splines, uh, a coupler from the transmission. You inspect it, make sure that stuff is good serviceable condition, and you put it back together. That gearbox has five bolts in them, and uh, I'll try to list the torque values in the comments below as well, in the about comments. I'm going to remove the wheel skirt on this car. Somehow it was damaged, probably wasn't installed right and the wheel has eaten through the wheel skirt and that's not good for snow in areas like that because snow could get packed up in your fender uh, and your bumper. On top of that, your bumper is not properly secure with that uh, wheel skirt like that because that helps secure it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this tire and get that wheel skirt replaced, cut the rivets out. I have new replacement rivets and put the new one in. It's 10 rivets and three probably three little uh, bolts before i jack the car up and take the wheel off i normally pull the wheel hub out and break the cv axle nut loose so go ahead and do that before you get the car off the ground next thing you want to do is cut the rivets out of your mud flap and the wheel skirt if there's any in there be careful not to damage or elongate the holes on the uh, skirt. Then you want to remove that nut there, that nut there, and that nut that's already loose there. Then I'll show you how to work the skirt out. Okay, now that I have all the rivet heads cut off and those nuts out, what you want to do is make sure that the outer edge is loose. <clears throat> And that the upper edge is unhooked from the fender and then come inside hook the back end off of those nuts and pull it from up there and it'll drop down and out so there it is next you want to look at the lip of this fender and make sure it's straight doesn't have any ripples in it if it does straighten them out with a hammer or pliers or something get it as straight as possible and if you see any plastic crack like this you want to put a stop drill hole on the tip of the crack to stop that crack from traveling further just take a drill bit small one put a little hole at the end of it that puts a round mark on the end of it and should stop it from growing now you want to inspect your suspension once you get uh, your uh, wheel off of it and I see here I have a broken sway bar end link so I need to fix that, uh, put that on there. I also see a tear in my control arm bushing. And I've seen some grease slung in here. But the CV axle looks good. So when I get that CV axle out, I'm going to look real close for, it, for a tear in the boot. Try to figure out where that grease was slinging from. Could have been from old grease, but I kind of doubt it since some of it was on the CV boot. So I'll take a close look at that. Next, you're going to look inside your bumper and make sure that the bumper is hooked into the bumper bracket before you put the replacement uh, splash guard in. Looks like this motor mount here is worn. It's not totally blown out yet, I don't think, because the bolt would be resting on the mount if it was. So I'll take a closer look at that when I take that mount loose because I'm going to have to raise the motor a little bit to get at my bolts, I think. Had a lot of issues with my phone charging, but nonetheless, I'm going to take this lens here and run it through the dishwasher. I've heard people do that to get them nice and clean and see how it turns out. And uh, 
seal that hole in it and use it on that side that I'm painting the plastic reflector. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.